This is Beth with Spurtle and Trivet, and I want to start my sugar series today. I was asked a question about sugar replacers and diabetic diets, and it led to me having a lot to say about sugar. So there will be three posts on the website and three videos. The first, which is today, will be about sugar replacers. The second one will be about reducing sugar in sugar cookies. I have a cookie experiment. And the third one will be about alternate sources of sugar like honey and agave. We probably all know that we, most of us, eat too much sugar. It's part of our general Western diet overconsumption of calories and it's leading to obesity and it's not very good. What's being found in nutrition studies right now is that replacing sugar with these non-caloric sweeteners is not helping to either reduce obesity or reduce general calorie consumption. It's not really known right now why that is, but my theory is that your body is getting that sweetness without the caloric consequences and it's thinking, I can do some more of that. And so you're eating more of the sweetness, whether it's from regular sugar or from these sweeteners, and your general calorie consumption increases. But we do have a lot of these high-intensity sweeteners, and they're all over the place, so I want to tell you about that. The first one that is becoming more and more common is called stevia. And it comes in little green packets, and it is from a plant called um, Stevia riboniana, and it's an extract from the plant, so it can be 30 to 400 times as sweet as sugar, depending on how well the extraction is done. And it's in a couple of brand names called Truvia, Purvia, and Stevia in the Raw, as well as some other things that just say Stevia on them. And stevia in the raw, when it comes in the little packets, not these packets, but they're green and they look a lot like this, um, it's mixed with dextrose so that there is a larger bulk and so it feels like you've put something into your coffee or tea. And when they're made to replace your sugar on a cup-for-cup -cup basis in baking, they mix it with maltodextrin. And what you actually need of stevia is a teaspoon of stevia to replace a cup of sugar. But they want you to use a full cup of stevia in the raw so they have that much maltodextrin in it. So there's that much of a difference of how much maltodextrin there is. The rest of the sweeteners I'll talk about today are artificial and they were mostly discovered using questionable lab practices where people were making something in their chemistry lab and then they licked their fingers. I wouldn't do that. I recommend not doing that, but it worked out all right for these people. The first one I'll talk about is saccharin. It's the one that we've had the longest. It's in the little peak packets and it's called sweet and low, except in Canada where the sweet and low packets actually have cyclamate in them because um, until recently saccharin wasn't allowed in Canada. Cyclamate is still not allowed in the U.S. And that's because cyclamate and saccharin mixed together have caused cancer in rats' bladders, but it only happens in rats' bladders there's something in rat urine that makes that happen. Otherwise, it's completely safe. Aspartame is also completely safe. It's a mixture of two amino acids with a methyl group attached. And the only reason it wouldn't be safe is if you have something called phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria, which means that you can't process phenylalanine, which is one of the amino acids that's in aspartame. And there are also studies that have been looking at anecdotal evidence that people get migraines from aspartame, and they haven't found a confirmation, but I would say that if you think you get migraines from aspartame, don't eat aspartame, and maybe you will have less migraines and 
everybody's happy. The final one is sucralose. It's the one that says it's made from sugar so it tastes like sugar. There is a sucrose molecule in there and um, it's got some extra chlorine atoms attached to it. It's about 600 times as sweet as sugar. So the rest of the stuff in this packet is dextrose. And similarly to stevia in the raw, it can be used in baking, unlike sac saccharin and aspartame, which fall apart in your oven. But sucralose does just fine as, um, as a baking aid, but it does have in those sucralose rep um, sugar replacements, it does have all that maltodextrin just like stevia in the raw. Going back to saccharin, it's 300 times as sweet as sugar, and aspartame is 200 times as sweet as sugar. Thank you for watching Spurtle and Trivet. I hope you learned something. If you need more information, there is a much longer piece on my blog at spurtleandtrivet.com. Subscribe, come back again. Thank you.